So you might have seen recently we started advertising for a new mechanics position down here and that was part of the interview process we actually set everyone a practical task as well and I thought we might share it with you guys to see whether you might be able to pass our assessment criteria. So what we did, we set five questions and they were all questions just to assess whether we were speaking the same sort of language, whether we knew where to go and look up information and get to the right answer and not necessarily actually can you tune into a derailleur, it was much more do you know how to problem solve and go and look up instructions. So the questions were, first one, I gave everybody a different wheel and asked them to describe the lateral run out of the wheel and determine if it is in sufficient tension. So this is something that we would do as part of a service where we would just check if the wheel was in spec and then decide whether we we're going to correct it or just pass it and say, yeah, it's okay. So what we would do with this is we would need to set up one of our gauges here. The first thing they had to really realize that this is a one millimeter around the whole circle here. And the run out is described left and right of that zero. So the first task is to get this set up in the right position. This wheel's got loads of stickers on, so getting it set up is actually quite tricky. Getting to the point where we can now get an accurate reading and determine whether or not this wheel is okay. Now, when we're wheel building, we would normally... Are you, are you finished banging? Yes. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Henry. Now, when we're wheel building, we always try and build to at least 0.5 of a millimetre run out. But to be a really, really good wheel, we're trying to achieve less than 0.2 millimetres. So anything more than half a millimetre, we'd start correcting and trying to sort out. Less than 0.2 millimetres, just like, yep, that wheel is good. We can just leave it alone. So running through here, and all I was looking for them to do was just to describe what the run out is. In which case, this is roughly around 0.3 of a millimetre, so we could just write that down. The second task was just to describe the overall tension, and we gave them... The, the chart that comes with the Park Tool TM1 and a Park TM1 tool. Now the first thing I would have needed to do was to determine what sort of spokes they were using. In this case, they were using a two millimeter straight gauge spoke. And from that information, you can look up on this chart what sort of reading you might expect from the TM1, which in this case would be a reading between 17 and 28 would be adequate. I was expecting them to find the valve and then just run through a really systematic process where they could start writing down the actual spoke tension. So in this case, it's 28 and then 27, you'd write that down, 28. And working in a way that if I ever ask them, that spoke that's under tension, can you take me back to it? And they'll be able to go from the valve, one, two, three, four, five, it's that spoke there that's out of tension, let's correct it. What they would have done is go around the entire drive side, the entire non-drive side, writing down all the readings and then get to an average at the bottom and we'd also be able to identify if anything was significantly out of tension and then we should also be able to add those two numbers together divide by two and get the overall average as well so that would describe the wheel nicely and highlight if there's any problematic spoke that needed some attention so the ideal answer to this would have been 0.3 millimeters run out the average spoke tension was in range according to that chart and we have a couple of spokes that are outlying and the average was at this kilograms of force. So is that what you would have done? Now, the next question was about suspension. Now, we didn't really expect a lot of people to come with knowledge about suspension, but we wanted to make sure they knew where to look up information. So the question was, what oil and volumes do you need for a 2023 model year Fox 36 factory, 160 millimeters. So hopefully they under identified this as it was a suspension fork made by Fox in this model year, 160 millimeters, and they could find that information on the Fox website. It was fairly easy to find. This is the Fox 36 factory. And we needed to find out some information from this. One is what type of air spring it has and what type of damper it has. And this information is fairly hard to find, but it is just here. So the air spring is the float evolve. And over here, it tells us that we are using the damper is the grip two. So with that information, we can now bring up the 2023 bath oil volume chart on the Fox website. Scroll down to 36 where it has all the options. And we can see here that the air side bath on all the models have the same 28 gold in 10 cc and 3 cc for the air side. However, when you come to the damper, you have two options depending on whether it's a performance or a factory spec. We wanted the factory spec, which tells us that we want Fox 5 weight Teflon infused and we want 40 cc. So the correct answer was for the damper side, 40 cc, 5 weight Teflon, and for the air side, 28 gold, 3 cc, and the upper chamber, 
10 cc in the bottom chamber that would have been the correct answer question number three related to some safety elements around hookless you know a bit of a pet peeve of mine and it simply asked what tire pressure in psi would you recommend for a 75 kilogram rider on a zip 303s wheel with a pirelli p0 race tlr in 28 millimeters now the pirelli p0 race tlr is a little bit of a red herring i suppose it's not that important in the whole equation the fact that we are on a hookless wheel and 75 kilograms is much more important. So we're hoping that the candidates found out the wheel specifications on the ZIP website and found out that it is an inside rim of 23 millimeters and that it was hookless and that it had a max tire pressure here of 73 PSI. That's the first clue. Then hopefully they'd go to the SRAM tire pressure calculator, type in all those parameters and come up with 62.3 PSI for the front wheel and 66.3 psi for the rear wheel okay question number four was a bit of a giveaway just to see if they had knowledge at the top of their heads and it simply was what direction would you unscrew the nds non-drive side of a bsa bottom bracket so we're using some acronyms here just to see if they had that sort of knowledge in their head now a few people were visualizing it and trying to imagine working on the bike um, other people just googled it and looked it up and a few other people went to the shelf and just picked one up so here we are this is the non-drive side the left hand side and this says tighten on one side in that direction. So the correct answer would be counterclockwise to undo it. Hopefully a nice easy one. And then the very last question, this is just testing product knowledge and knowing where to go and look for the information. So question was, are the following Shimano components compatible with one another? And I gave them a whole string of components, the SLU4009R. Hopefully, if you're familiar with Shimano product codes, you might have known what this means. So. SL would be the shifter, 9R is about the, um, the 9 speed, RD for rear derailleur, again, U4000 series, CS is cassette, and again, in the 400 series, and again, with the number 9, and then lastly, the bit that caught everybody out, was CN HG60111, which a few people recognised was actually a chain, and it was an 11 speed chain, so a few people didn't go and check and actually just said no it's not compatible thinking we're trying to match an 11 speed with a 9 speed system or thinking this is all Shimano Qs and needs a link glide however if we go and look at the Shimano product chart you can see all of the information along here and these are the parts here link glide 9 speed and here is our shifter unit here is our rear derailleur here is our cassette rear hubs irrelevant and here are all the chains that would be compatible and sure enough at the bottom here is a link glide 500 but you can also use hg601 hg701 hg901 which are all 11 speed chains will all be compatible think you did okay let's see how the actual candidates done we've now completed our round of interviews um, and we were absolutely astounded by everyone applied. If that was one of you, then thank you so much. We had dozens, I wouldn't say 100 applicants, but it was definitely more than 50 from all over the world as well. And I'm sorry, we're not in the space for doing immigration and stuff right now, um, but we interviewed as far south as Windsor, as far north as Aberdeen. Um, yeah, it's been a pretty hectic process to be honest. And we actually recruited two positions, one to fill the advertised position and one person that impressed us so much that we offered them a role as well. But down to the actual interview task, we were actually astonished. Only one person actually answered all those questions correctly. <laughs> he already works here and now he's asking for a pay rise. But the actual candidates, the one that caught most people out was actually question number one. This really amazed me because a lot of the candidates were reporting, even though they've worked in bike shops for many, many years, they'd never actually seen one of the dial indicator gauges that we showed you. And some of them didn't actually have tension meters in their shops either, which is really astounding me. The oil volume, nearly everyone got that right. They knew where to go and find that information and answered that question correctly. A couple of candidates even noticed that on the American site, you get the option of either the grip two or the fit four damper. So it was awesome to be shown a slight problem with my question there as well. The question number three, nearly everybody got wrong nearly everyone went down the route of looking at the pirelli website for the recommended some of them realized that the pirelli recommendation was out of sync with what the maximum pressure was on the zip website but only a couple of people actually gave a relatively correct answer of around 60 psi and when i showed them the correct answer all of them were like oh yeah of course you know that's where to go so that was a, an interesting one everybody got the bsa question right <laughs> thankfully and the last one there's a lot of confusion on that actually there was a lot of people who got who identified that it was a link glide system 
and identified that the last product in that chain was not a link glide product but only a few people actually went through to the compatibility chart and looked up every single component like we showed you and decided that the answer was correct so it was an interesting task and i'm really really glad we did it and i'm really glad that we have found two fantastic candidates and hopefully you'll see them on the channel sometime next year okay i think we're done normal content is about to resume Thanks for watching and if you like this sort of content, please like, subscribe and get down in the comments with how you got on.